Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning live broadcast here in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, where we examine headlines, news items from our city, our state, our country, along with tips, comments, ideas, and suggestions that you may have so that we can all have an awesome life here as a community of English-speaking locals. It is always a pleasure to get together with you, and if this is the first time that you're joining us, Please let us know by adding the word new to your comment. And also, if there's something really important that you wish to share, uh, just let us know by adding a letter Q at the beginning of your question or comment, and we'll be happy to get to it at this, during the second half of the broadcast. And by the way, in case you're wondering, I was vaccinated. I was Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. I went for my vaccine yesterday. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to tell you how it went. Um, although I'm sure you've heard a lot of uh, reports of how it, it is going. It's going really great. We'll have some news items to share about that. Uh, we have some news about sporting events. We have a whole lot of very confusing, very strange, and slightly disappointing news about the mayoral debates going on here in the city along with some news about events that are taking place this weekend that you may want to consider. So we're going to dive into all of this and see where we come out at the other end. Okay, for starters, several local news outlets, along with good friends and acquaintances, have reported a smooth kickstart to the current COVID-19 vaccination campaign for folks 50 to 59 years of age at the La Lija Sporting and Cultural Complex near Pitillal. The campaign will continue for a total of five scheduled days at this location, while a concurrent campaign for pregnant women is taking place at the Naval Hospital. Authorities stated that the success was due to the enormous coordination of hundreds of volunteers along with the fact that the vast majority of those getting the vaccine had pre-registered and filled out their vaccination documentation ahead of time. Vaccination at La Lija continues from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day until May 25th. Now, in case you missed it, um, I went live yesterday while I was waiting for my turn to get the vaccine and I will share a link to this uh, broadcast from yesterday on the show notes, but I am happy to share some details of the experience right now if you want to hear them. Um, I'm going to get started, and if you don't want to hear them, just let me go. Let me know by writing snap out of it in your comments, and I will gladly snap out of it. First of all, uh, it was incredibly incredibly smooth like we were you know I went with two friends I was expecting that it would take forever and I figured well you know as long as I'm with my friends it's gonna be okay 
we um, left. Um, it took us about half an hour to get there. So we were there. Um, okay, let me start again. Between the time that we arrived and the time that we got the vaccine, not even 25 minutes had gone by. Once we arrived at the sporting center, you know, you get there, very kind people tell you where to go. And, um, and the first thing that they do is they look at your documentation. And um, because nobody has been very specific at letting us know you want to fill this out ahead of time, there are tables and places for you to fill out your documentation in case you didn't fill it out. This is the official PDF that you get back from when you pre-register. There are plenty of tables, but I do recommend you bring a pen. For example, if you wrote some things at home with a black pen and you get there and you continue with a with a blue pen, they will not um, they will not accept that. So once you go through this process at the very entrance where it's hooded, you know, I brought my fab my fabulous hat. I never had to wear it because I was always under um, <clears throat> uh, under um, what do you call that chingadera? A canopy. I was always under a canopy when I was outside. So we filled out our, our paperwork and then we went inside and sat down. And, um, and while we were sitting down, we were, um, you know, that's when I did the broadcast. And it was just amazing to see the number of people that were working towards this. I said hello and thank you to everyone and anyone that seemed to be in charge of something or wearing a uniform. Um, and then it came time for the vaccines. And yes, indeed, you're sitting down, you're waiting, and then they come to you with a little cart as though you were sitting on a plane and, uh, and they prick you. And before you know it, it's over. I mean, the vaccine was there and, and all of a sudden, you know, I was holding my, my, my finger over a little cotton chingadera, which they came back to pick up and throw away all the time that you this is going on you are hearing this recording that is going on and on and on where they ask you things like well if you think you've had covid before raise your hand if you think you have symptoms right now raise your hand this is what is going to happen this is how you're going to feel they recommend paracetamol if you get itchy this morning i woke up feeling a sore arm but not unbearably so and, and my body feels a little wonky. I took some paracetamol, and I think I'm going to stay home all day long. Um, uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, they also informed us that the second dose would be distributed with, between 30 to 34 days from, from the day we received it, which is nice. And then, um, but I'm being boom, 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 we went back to the car. And so in less than then 55 minutes we were heading back home and that that was all there is to it and um and and again there was this overwhelming sense of gratitude um tony is asking didn't you have to wait 30 minutes after the injection we had to wait uh, 15 minutes um we had to wait 15 minutes and we waited 15 minutes and because we were fine we were we were um we just left we left and everything was fine and it was it was just great it was wonderful so please take care of this take care of this sooner than later if you're in the age range because keep in mind we mentioned this yesterday um news take time to travel to smaller places and um you know as you know this particular vaccination campaign includes other nearby municipalities such as san sebastian del oeste and so forth and so on so chances are that there's going to be all these people coming into the city during the weekend and during the final day. So if I was you, I would just go. I would just go and, uh, and take care of this and, um, and, and do it. So that is my account of everything that went on. Let me continue with our news and then we'll get back to your comments and your questions that are specific to this. Thank you very much for indulging my story. Um, I'm vaccinated. Nya, 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 nya. Anyhow, <laughs> in other news, um, in other news, Health Undersecretary Hugo Lopez Gatel has stated that sporting events, sporting events are the most likely gatherings where pandemics can spread. The statement 
came at a time in which soccer matches are beginning to come back throughout Mexico. Apparently, one such soccer match took place this past Wednesday in Pachuca, in the state of Hidalgo, where the home team allowed over 40% of attendance at the stadium, 40% being the current sanitary norm. So the home team was penalized over um, half a million pesos. So Lopez Gatel is not saying don't go to the matches. What he's simply advising is that sanitary guidelines must be observed at all times. And now we turn our attention to, ay Dios mío, the local debates for Puerto Vallarta mayor and local deputy through a series of events uh, and a series of headlines that um, quite frankly have me more bemused than before. Uh, let us start with the deputies. We uh, recall that the coming election will include electing both uh, um, a mayor for the city, but also two deputies, one local deputy and one federal deputy. This is what we have. Of all the, according to this news item that I'm showing you right now, of all the local deputy candidates, only one accepted the invitation to a debate. Neither Yusara Canales nor Arturo Davalos, the current two favorites, and Arturo Davalos having been our, our mayor, Neither one of them accepted the invitation and several other candidates to uh, the local deputy positions, such as Francisco Sanchez Peña, Andrea Morales, Ulises Sanchez and Marcela Navarrete didn't even return the call, apparently. So this article goes on to mention that for the mayoral debate, which is going to take place tonight, only three candidates out of a total of 11 will participate. So, so much for <laughs> a comprehensive debate. Now, this last notion was confirmed by this other article, which mentions that only three candidates to become Puerto Vallarta's next mayor will participate in the debate organized by the Electoral College, and the event will be broadcast, will take place tonight, and will be broadcast on social media. And there is a link at the end of the article in case you wish to watch. But wait, the plot thickens. You see, last night I was minding my own business looking for content for this morning when I stumbled upon this other debate that was going on live. This one was organized by CPS Media, the parent company for the Tribuna de la Bahia and the, the Vallarta Tribune and several other business interests uh, that belong to Fernando Gonzalez Corona. And this particular debate featured six out of 11 candidates, or maybe 10. I have lost count as to whether we have 10 candidates or 11. It depends on the source that you're reading. Um, so at the time last night, I didn't even know, and I still don't know if this was an official debate or not, uh, because it wasn't until this morning that I realized that the official debate for mayors is going to take place um, this evening. Uh, but I did watch what went on last night, and I did take some notes that I'll be happy to share with you in case you are intrigued about this process. Um, again, four out of ten candidates, or maybe it's 11, I'm not sure, did not show up. There were four theme blocks. The first one was talking about security and mobility. The second one about public finances. The third one about social and urban development and the fourth, fourth one about economic development and tourism here in the Bay. Um, the candidates had the opportunity to, to draw questions from a, a bowl, and these questions were apparently developed by the editorial the, uh, team at CPS Media, and apparently they were also submitted by readers of the Tribuna de la Bahia newspaper. I didn't even know this was going on. And, um, and uh, it, was, it was moderated by one of the local um, newscasters and, and, and reporters that works for the company who repeatedly reminded everybody that CPS Media is producing this in conjunction with all this, these radio stations and all these uh, other. It seemed like an infomercial for the company, um, quite honestly. And then on top of it, there were, there were pop-up ads for advertisers going on during the whole broadcast, which, you know, I don't have much experience in debates, but I thought it was a little bit out of place that you're in the middle of this 
political event, which is supposed to be completely unbiased. And meanwhile, there are ads for external companies like restaurants and real estate agencies popping up during the debate, which I thought was just a little kooky. So a draw was made to determine the order in which the candidates were able to participate, and each candidate was given one minute to answer randomly drawn questions. So it wasn't so much of a debate as much as it was candidates responding to separate questions. Um, and, and some of them were coherent, some of them were not. Uh, there were questions like, you know, would you improve... Um, um, lighting on public areas in Puerto Vallarta and everybody would say well lighting is very important yes we have a program for improving lighting but nobody would really talk about it in specifics um, through the time that I watched there was an average of 480 viewers watching this event live which when you consider that Puerto Vallarta has a population of 300 350,000 I was like well where is everybody else um, let's see See, I did love the very blatant way in which they muted each candidate exactly at the one minute mark and talk about not knowing how to speak. Most of the candidates would miss their mark and they would just be whoop, shut up, which is uh, was fascinating. And then um, on the second half of each one of these blocks, candidates were allowed to elaborate on the topic. And there were a couple of candidates that started throwing mud pies at one another. Uh, for example, one candidate said to Luis Munguia, how can we trust you as a mayor when you pu were publicly accused of hitting your girlfriend? Um, <laughs> so this was the tenor of the whole event. Um, so this morning I am wondering what was this event about? Was it just an infomercial for CPS Media or was this an official debate? Well, this morning none of the other uh, news outlets in the city covered last night's event, which makes sense because last night's event was um, organized by a competitor to the other outlets. Um, so it was it was weird. It was weird. Um, I thought through the whole electoral process that at some point I would be able to bring you some sort of intelligent or quasi-intelligent report on what the stances are for each one of the candidates. But to be honest with you, I don't know that we're going to get that. I don't know that we're going to get that. I have spoken with several trusted local friends, and by local I mean uh, Mexican nationals that are involved in politics, and everybody seems to agree that the total um, procedure is just, it's just a mess. So do we know who's going to be our mayor? We have no idea. Do we know if our city is going to be in good hands? We can keep our fingers crossed, but if it's any indication or if, if or if the person that wins is a reflection of the process that we've seen so far, you know, I don't know what to tell you other than I may try to watch this evening just to see what goes on. And if there's anything interesting or useful to share back with you, I will be so very glad to do that tomorrow morning. And now let us turn over to the weather so we can continue with the rest of the broadcast. That cloud looks like a donut eating a policeman, says snarky weather today. It is 26 degrees, feels like 28. Humidity is at 64%. It looks a little high. And our temperature in Fahrenheit is 79 degrees. Our weather forecast for today, Friday, May 21st, is we're going to have a partly cloudy day with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 21. Tomorrow, Saturday, will be a humid day with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 21. And Sunday will be another humid day, high temperature of 32. It's getting hot again. And a low temperature of 22. Let us hope that we have a great weekend this weekend. I have three additional news items that I wish to share with you, and these would be, let me start with this one, boom. Uh, let's see, in case you didn't know, yes, in case you didn't know, Puerto Vallarta celebrates two anniversaries at the end of May. One is its foundation as a city, and also its foundation as a municipality. Every year, the cultural department here in our city organizes what is known as the Mayo Fest, 
which includes all sorts of cultural and musical events that have varied greatly from year to year, depending on the city's budget. <laughs> uh, there's been massive concerts, including people, personalities like Alejandro Fernandez, and these concerts have been for free. And then there's been some rather wimpy celebration gears. Um, the event was canceled last year at, uh, because of, of COVID, of course. And this time around, while we have been busy coronavirusing through life, um, there will be a Mayo Fest. And in fact, it has already begun. I came across this schedule of events, and it is as sketchy as many of us locals have come to expect. I can show you, for example, that there were things going on starting on the 17th of May. Who knew? Um, um, there's things like lectures on the archaeology, um, uh, patrim um, patrimonio, on the archaeology legacy of Puerto Vallarta. Um, that one actually happened at La Lija, which is where we're getting the vaccine. But um, who knew? Who knew? Um, let's see what else we can look at. Oh, um, on the 22nd, that is tomorrow, there's going to be a Vallarta Wellness. <laughs> I'm sure that had to be Vallarta Wellness event at the at the at the lighthouse on the Malecon. But of course, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, there's going to be something going on at the cultural center at El Pitilla, the new cultural center. That might be interesting to go check out simply because the cultural center is um, is brand spanking new. So again, there's a ton of stuff going on, but there's not a lot of details about everything or anything. There's a video mapping event at the Malecon at 8 p.m. on the 30th of May. And um, so I'm happy to share this information, which is what we have. And unfortunately, um, one of the things I will comment is that the city has yet to understand um, and many event organizers have yet to understand that, you know, unless the information you provide is compelling enough for people to actually want to go, then nobody's going to go. So it is what it is. There are two other non-related events that caught my attention for this weekend. The first one being this um, ice carving exhibition, should you happen to find yourself at or near La Isla Shopping Center tomorrow, there will be an ice carving exhibition starting at 6 p.m. at the amphitheater, which is outdoors with this heat, with this weather. Yes, and I wonder how they will pull it off. And of course, yesterday or the day before, we also mentioned this um, fire ride extreme bicycling event that starts today and continues tomorrow. If you happen to be around town, there you have it. If you ever hear um, of other interesting events and you have um, important uh, uh, websites to share, you know we're always happy to, to, to share them here. You're always welcome to share them um, so that we can get a better sense as to what we can be do with our leisurely time here in our city. And this wraps up the news part of the broadcast. Let me now rewind my comment tape and take a look at some of your comments as we enter chit chat mode hello everyone good morning brett uh den and kathy were knocked out by the second vaccine uh second pfizer vaccine um i'm feeling a little wonky this morning and i think i'm gonna spend a lot of time close to my bed <laughs> with your permission of course um let's see what else we have here ding 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 gandun um, am I vaxxed and relaxed? I am vaxxed and relaxed. Karen, thank you very much for asking. Although, to be quite honest, it's not like my choice of activities is going to vary greatly within the next few weeks or months. Um, uh, but, for example, I'll feel a lot more comfortable riding public buses in the city in about a week or two when the vaccine has taken its, has done its magic. Um, and I will feel a lot less awkward about attending indoor events. But, you know, for the most part, my life will continue to be the same as it has been. Um, let's see what else. Ta -da 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 -da. Thank you for your video yesterday. Going to get vaxxed after the broadcast. Good for you, Lisa. That's exactly what we did yesterday. My friend came up 
and pick me up at one o'clock. We got there by 1.30. And, and again, we were done in less time than you can imagine. Um, but, you know, still bring your, oh my God, I forgot to tell you that. We brought water. They had water. Um, I brought some crochet to pass the time. I didn't even have time to whip it out. I mean, it was just, it was just precious. It was just wonderful. Um, uh, let's see what else. My sister's asking, how am I this morning? Again, hermanita. I'm a little sore in the arm and my body feels a little, you know, achy, but nothing major. You know, I'm just going to take the day nice and, and mellow and I'm sure that I'm going to be fine by tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, Claude says, congrats on your first prick. Claude and Lucas are now in Canada and I miss them. So guys, thank you very much for checking in. I hope you guys are doing good. Um, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Oh, Logan is back from Yelapa. I was wondering why I was feeling off all week and realized it's because I haven't been able to join the broadcast live. Nice to be back. Nice to have you back, Logan. I hope we can catch up this, over the weekend. I'd love to see you. Um, let's see what else. Uh, um. Yes, this was so funny because I was broadcasting live and then I turned around and there was at least one other person from the cluster that was listening to me while I was telling how it was going. So it was it was it was a good thing. It was it was really exciting. I was just so giddy about the whole thing. Um, I wish I was sitting getting a mani petty somewhere. Congratulations to you, Judy. I love it. Um, let's see what else we have. Thank you for all the congratulations, guys. I'm just really excited. Raymond, it's great to read you. I hope you continue to recover from your surgery. Um, uh, congratulations on your upcoming trip to Mexico, Alan. Drive safely or fly safely, of course. Uh, let's see what else we have. What vaccines were offered in PV? Oh, my God, we have quite a... We've, got, we've had quite a few ones, uh, but... You know, I'm not worrying about it much more than I worry whether I mean, the paracetamol I take is one brand or another. Although I do see that some people seem to be very concerned about the brand of the vaccines. Uh, let's see. When can we old folks get vaccinated here in Vallarta, 65 and older? Laura, there's been two campaigns for people over 60. You can get vaccinated now on the, on the vaccine that they're distributing now but you have to have not received a single previous vaccine. In other words, if you got started with Pfizer, which is what they started with the, the seniors in town and you want to continue, you won't be able to get vaccinated because what they're distributing right now is AstraZeneca. If you have not received any vaccination, they are also vaccinating seniors in this particular campaign. So I would just go and get it done. You will receive the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, let's see, uh, what else? There's a great Racia Festival in Nueva Vallarta annually. Good for you. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Uh, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. yes, I have been so looking forward to getting it. Thank you very much, Doreen. I've gotten so many good wishes. I really appreciate that. Um, Okay, Jorge asks, what is Raicilla? Raicilla is, uh, oh my goodness, where do we start? We, we, have to, we have to put that one aside because Raicilla is just heaven. Raicilla, mezcal, and tequila are three different alcoholic beverages or liqueurs or spirits that are made out of different varieties of agave plant. Each one has its own unique personality. Each one has its own unique flavor. And uh, all three of them are absolutely yummy. Um, and, of course, like all agave uh, spirits, these are traditional liquors of the state of Jalisco. That's what Raicilla is. Uh, let's see what else we have. Let's 
Good tequila is my go-to, but good ricea, mezcal, or other agave distillations are equally likely to be in my glass. I hear you. I hear you. Although, personally, if I had to choose between the three, my favorite go-to would be a good mezcal. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, Paco, the upcoming election. A farce where all we can know for sure are the candidates' emblematic colors. I totally agree with you, Heather. It is such a party, and 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 it's not even a good party. It it is it is it is a farce, uh, but you know it's it's what we got. It's what we got. Unfortunately, you know it could be so amazing, but you know, and sometimes I I think too much that candidates should be able to be to articulate themselves. When you see these folks, you know, stepping in front of a microphone and they cannot even articulate coherently. Uh, you got to wonder how they collaborate with their teams or how they empower the people that will be working with them. But, you know, it's a it's a complicated topic. We're not going to go there today, but it is quite comical to watch. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Lisa says Fire Ride is a fun event to watch. I've seen videos of it and it's really exciting. Although standing in the sun out in the middle of nowhere, I think I'm going to stay put. Um, they should haul the ice carving at the ice skating rink, says Colleen. Colleen, I say, send a letter. Uh, submit your submit your suggestion to the people that that matter. Absolutely. Um, Brett thinks I'll be thinking about like, taking a vacation to Mazatlan. I will definitely visit Mazatlan, but I think I'm going to wait until the new aquarium is finished because I find that absolutely fascinating. I also want to wait until tours are starting to take place to the the Islas Marias because I'm really curious to say that to see that absolutely uh let's see what else we have our streets closed for fire ride I wouldn't be surprised because in years past they have closed the malecon and they have closed some of the streets where the riders are supposed to go through um so if you have business to attend in downtown Consider taking the Libramiento and um, and having enough time to get to your destination. Let's see what else. One valid reason to be concerned with which vaccine you receive is there are rumblings that this may affect your access to a vaccine travel passport into certain countries. Of course, that makes perfect sense. Uh, but, you know, we're so far, as far as I know, from getting to that point in which there is one specific travel passport for vaccines and it's a very complicated and debatable um topic but yes i think you're absolutely correct logan i am just happy that i don't have overseas travel um in my near future because i don't have to worry about this but i can see how some friends that have just returned back to canada or are headed in that general direction or maybe the united states are concerned about this matter um let's see has a wildfire situation in the area calmed down yet um, fires come and go. There's nothing really serious going on right now, Felix. But um, I expect this is going to, this is going to change. Uh, let's see. Jeannie, watch the dance of the forty-one. I'm always happy to learn that you watch things that we recommend here, that you experience things that we recommend here at Coffee and Headlines. And um, with that said, I've reached the end of your comments. We've reached the end of the broadcast. As always. It is a pleasure to connect with you, especially now that we are vaccinated. We are feeling a little bit less stressed about the whole thing. And again, I encourage everyone, if you are of age, just get it done. It, um, you know, bring a friend and, and, and just get it done. It is important. It is important. So stay healthy, stay calm, stay happy, take care of yourselves and your bodies, take care of your minds and your souls. And uh, hopefully we'll get together again tomorrow because uh, I'll be here. I hope you will too. Have a great day.